Finn Williams är statsarkitekt i Malmö. Han är också gästprofessor på Institute of Innovation and Public Purpose på UCL i London och medgrundare av Public Practice. Välkommen på scen, Finn. Ja, tack så mycket. Vilken inspirerande morgon. Jag ska säga nu, jag kommer ta det här på, på engelska eftersom jag kommer att prata om tre projekt från London. Och jag har lärt mig att det är ganska svårt men också för mig men också väldigt tråkigt för er att prata om mitt arbete i London på svenska. Um, so, I thought I'd start here uh, with the people I work for. Malmö's population is the fastest growing of any big city in Sweden. It's also the youngest. Nearly half of our population is under the age of 35. And it's the most diverse. In fact, it's technically super diverse, which means that over half of our population has a foreign background, which actually puts me in the majority. <laughs> Just over two years ago, I moved to Sweden and had the honor of becoming Malmö's 10th city architect since William Klein in 1862 and 10 others or nine others since, including, I think, one of my predecessors is in the audience here, Krista Larsson. As you can see, it's a slightly different crowd from the slide, the previous slide. And, and Malmö has, has changed radically over those last uh, 160 years. The, the role of the city architect in the municipality has, of course, also changed, but how might it need to continue to evolve in the future? Malmö is a place uh, people often describe as brokigt, modigt, even kaxigt, a city that's open to change and where citizens often lead that change through what I think is a, a world-class civil society. Organisations like Vexvecket, who were here yesterday and uh, are running a workshop today, um, a city with a, a do-it-yourself attitude that you can see from everything in everything from its incredible uh, skate scene to festivals like Engebeger's Gartefest uh, and throughout the wider Sofia and Kulturjordzone. A culture you can taste in Malmö's food, in particular our amazing uh, street food. An activism uh, that often reminds me of Jane Jacobs' quote, even if it's a, a cliche, I think it's particularly true for Malmö. Cities have the capability of providing something for everybody only because and only when they are created by everybody. These are the kind of things that make Malmö unique. But today, too much of our new development, not just in Malmö but across the country, has the opposite effect. These are projects from Malmö to Umeå, Helsingborg to Göteborg, Stockholm to Skellefteå. So it's no surprise then that 87% of people in Sweden say they have little or no influence over their city and surroundings. So what can architects, uh, city architects or public planners do about it? About 10 years ago, I was working for the Mayor of London, and uh, there I was responsible for public sector-led regeneration uh, projects, or Stadsutvecklung project, in northwest and central London. These tended to be big, multi-million pound, top-down projects that started with the best intentions and hopeful visualizations. But the reality <laughs> didn't always match our carefully planned project objectives. And, and often left uh, locals disappointed. In fact, we were probably more successful at uniting communities against us uh, than, than behind our plans. So, so I wondered, uh, after I joined the organisation, what if we took funding for just one of those big projects and instead asked lots of different communities, local communities, to come up with their own ideas for regenerating their own neighbourhoods? We set up a crowdfunding platform with a local startup and we pledged up to £50,000, 600,000 kroner, uh, to projects that could demonstrate real local support and real local need. Uh, and that was up to 75% of the total project costs as long as they could crowdfund the rest. And there was an amazing response. Uh, projects coming forward from communities all over London. 
Over five years, we pledged 2.41 million pounds of funding, so roughly equivalent of uh, one of our larger top-down regeneration schemes. But instead, it went to 130 different projects, all led by not-for-profit community groups. In turn, they raised 2.44 million pounds from local people, local businesses, uh, local authorities, and, and other funders. And that was through over 20,000 pledges, with an average of 150 uh, pledges per project. And it wasn't just about funding. These projects engaged over 7,000 volunteers, which brought people together from different parts of communities. And, and uh, some research that was published recently on those that first five-year period shows that 72% said the experience increased community cohesion, 77% felt more empowered as a result of the process, 86% said it significantly improved their skills, and 73% had plans to start another community project in the future. They weren't totally put off. So those impacts uh, are still being felt. How might this be relevant for Malmö then? Well, in Sweden, uh, there's a totally different relationship between communa and communities. Then in London, in many ways, I think local democracy works a lot better here. But there is a need to build the capacity of Malmö's citizens to engage with how their city is shaped. That's why we established a programme called Malmö in the Making, which has been a year-long programme exploring what architecture means to Malmö's citizens and how they can influence the city's development. The focus of the year has been a month uh, of over 120 free public events, activities throughout the city, throughout September. Everything from a, a play street uh, to a, a brick safari, a pocket park, uh, to a pub quiz. We're now beginning the process of evaluating all of this and, and recovering uh, from it. Um, and, and gathering what we've learned and planning uh, how it might continue. What I can say now is the unbelievable engagement in Malum and the Making, both from organisers and from people who participated in it, shows that this kind of platform is both hugely valued and necessary. Second example now. Pocket parks, playgrounds and pavilions are one thing. What about housing? Back when I was working for this man at City Hall, uh, there was a drive, I don't know why everyone laughs at this kind of <laughs> no. um, There was a drive from colleagues in another uh, Verwaltning to uh, sell off uh, our largest plots of public land to the largest developers around. Over the previous 10 years, uh, a greater and greater proportion of housing in London was being delivered on large sites of over a quarter of a hectare. And over the same period, the number of small builders had halved, leaving a housing industry increasingly dominated by a very few uh, large players. Meanwhile, the vast majority of London's capacity for new housing was actually on sites of less than uh, a quarter of a hectare, which the big builders weren't necessarily interested in. And my colleagues in City Hall's property departments were letting sit at the kind of bottom of the drawer. So I wondered whether we could use a similar approach to Crowdfund London, minus the crowdfunding aspect, to connect these small sites with small developers, housing associations, community-led groups. And we built another online platform. And this, the idea of this was to make it as easy as possible for public landowners like Transport for London to make their scraps of leftover land available to small builders on long leases, Tomtret. We also made it uh, as easy as possible for small builders to bid for that land with an emphasis on quality and affordability, not just price. Uh, and that was by, for example, providing really easy to understand, consistent technical and legal information and a simple application process. So, for example, this site uh, ended up in the hands of Peter Barber, architects who created this extraordinary uh, new street lined with terrace houses. So that was one of 60 sites across London that have been opened up through that platform, with uh, many more in the pipeline. And collectively, what's interesting is, of course, they add up to more than one of those large sites. They often come forward quicker. The earlier stages are particularly a lot quicker than the complex, big 
uh, planning process for big sites. And by supporting smaller builders, City Hall is also helping to diversify London's housing sector. And there are now over 1,500 uh, small builders who employ less than 10 people signed up uh, to the platform. So if a, a top-heavy housing market was an issue in London, it's arguably even bigger an issue here, where house building is dominated by a small number of big players that hold a lot of power, a bit like our food industry, when 90% of our food comes from just three uh, businesses in Sweden. And it tends to lead to a narrower choice, uh, to higher prices and to higher barriers to entry for new competitors. It also affects quality because uh, it can lead, while it can lead to consistent minimum standards, there are a few incentives to go beyond that minimum. Architects hold relatively little balance, a power in, in balance to those developers, and too often they see their uh, ambitions eroded by cost cutting during the construction process, in some cases like this, resulting in the architect architects actually disowning uh, the results. So look at the difference then when housing from the same material in the same city at around the same price uh, is not only designed but also developed by an architect. This is uh, Iggy by Siegel, uh, one of a growing number of architect developers from Malmö who are boldly taking on the big house builders by doing it themselves and showing them up in the process. And the city's lowered the thresholds for new entrants by making smaller plots of public land or existing buildings, as you would have heard about Ferrado Arsen, uh, available for architect communities and architect developers and community-led groups. And, and I think the results are consistently more ambitious and more sustainable. Now, I hope we can grow this emerging generation of uh, smaller, locally-based developers further and challenge the big house builders to up their game. Finally, uh, I want to talk about who plans our places. How can planning departments and the architecture profession get better at reaching the full breadth of expertise and experience that's out there in society? In 1976, half of all architects in the UK worked in the public sector. 40 years later, by the time I'd moved to the GLA, that figure had dropped to less than 1%. So municipal housing departments across the country had been decimated by decades of deregulation, privatisation uh, and uh, funding cuts. And even when they had jobs to advertise, they were actually finding it hard to, to even attract any suitable candidates. Report after report at that time was coming out uh, with the lack of skills and capacity in the public sector being the number one barrier to uh, a good built environment, a yastad that lives milieu. To cut a very long story short, because of time, I co-founded a not-for-profit social enterprise called Public Practice, with, together with Pooja Agrawal, uh, that recruited really brilliant architects, planners, sustainability experts, lots of other uh, built environment practitioners from the private sector and placed them within uh, local authorities in brand new roles. Over three and a half years, uh, when I was the chief executive of public practice, we placed nearly 200 people in uh, over 50 or authorities through six different cohorts. And that figures up to now nearly 300 um, with associates within uh, 78 authorities across most of England. 10% of those associates first uh, 12 months was dedicated to a collective program of learning and development which produced practice-based research which could then be shared across authorities and and this was in some ways a kind of new alternative to the model of the city architects uh, a distributed network embedded in different departments and authorities which had i think more power as a community uh, of practice a, a movement in a way than any uh, high-ranking individual Importantly, the scale of recruitment we were doing also meant we could bring a greater diversity of expertise, experiences and backgrounds into authorities. And we put a lot of emphasis on equality, diversity and inclusion as well as the value of lived experience and local expertise. So we ended up with a number of really brilliant professionals that were able to actually place back in the communities where they uh, grew up. People like uh, Selassie Satufe embarking 
uh, Mark Warren uh, in Merton, Armand Nori in Enfield, Akil Scaife Smith in Croydon. So how could this be relevant in Malmö? Well, when I uh, started at Malmö, I have to say uh, I was surprised at the diversity I'd heard so much about in advance didn't seem to be reflected in many of the meeting rooms and events that I found myself in. Meetings where we were often making decisions about areas that none, or at least very few of us, had direct lived experience of. Uh, and when I asked for statistics, no one seemed to have the full picture of how representative we really were. So we secured some funding to start an initiative called Urban Academy, uh, which for the first time uh, is collecting data on how representative the architecture industry really is, what barriers there are to entering the profession, and developing measures to break down those barriers for people from underrepresented groups. People like Duha Altai here, uh, who uh, grew up, is born and grew up in uh, Rosengård, uh, but told me that her and her friends, and she's now studying engineering at Lund, but she told me that her and her friends uh, are assuming that they're going to have to go to the Middle East to get a job because they can't see themselves in the built environment profession in Sweden. This is a brain drain of exactly the expertise we need most. Haida Alwad here. Uh, actually moved to Sweden age nine from Iraq and grew up in this area in uh, Lindingen. And when he told his careers advisor at school that he wanted to be an architect, he was laughed at. But he persevered and despite uh, the odds, he made it. A few weeks ago, Haidar uh, went back to Lindingen through Urban Academy as one of our pilot projects, also connected to Malmö in the making, to speak to the kids there about becoming an architect. And at the end, oh, this boy uh, over here uh, came up to Haida and said, uh, before I'd thought about becoming an astronaut, but uh, after today I'm thinking about becoming an architect. Hopefully, potentially even a future Stads architect. Um, so, to end with, you know, I think the lack of structural, the lack of representation in architecture is obviously uh, a structural issue. It's not going to change overnight through one child's choice uh, or through one organisation. In November, we're going to be publishing uh, a report with the findings from this first phase of work on Urban Academy, as well as establishing a coalition of organisations that are committed to making Malmö's built environment industry more representative of the communities we serve. Sweden has been world leading when it comes to gender equality uh, and children's rights, far ahead of the UK. Uh, now it's time, I think, for us to be equally progressive about other dimensions of diversity. London and Malmö are, of course, um, completely different situations. If there's one thing I've learned in the first two years is that much of what I did in London isn't suitable or workable over here. In many ways, I've had to start from scratch. But if there is one common thread, uh, I think it's the value of opening up the processes in city halls to citizens, of shifting from a bureaucracy where one organisation does everything on behalf of the people to more of a, a kind of plurocracy uh, based on platforms that, that give over power to different communities to develop their own ideas. When I, when I started in Malmö, my boss, Marcus Horning, set me the challenge of making the Stads Bidnas Contorit uh, feel like it doesn't just have one city architect, but 220. That every employee should share uh, the same mission. It's still very early days. But in, in the end, I think I'd like to go further. I'd like Malmö to go from having a city architect to feeling like it's a city of architects. Thank you very much. Stoppa. Ja, vilken härlig vision och vilket, eh, vilka bra medskick till vad vi måste jobba med för att skapa diversitet. Eh, ja, det finns ju massor med frågor. Jag tänker att jag ska släppa in från, för publiken som också tror har frågor. John? Eh, det har de. Eh, och det går bra att ta på svenska. Absolut. Eh, eh, och och det, första ja. frågan är, kostar det mer för kommunen att ge tomter till små byggare än stora? Alltså i form av arbete och sådär. Och, ja. och jag ska också nämna innan du svarar att eh, 
Glöm inte publiken att när ni sprider vad vi håller på med så ska vi prata om detta som hashtag idéburet byggande eller hashtag socialt byggande. Mm. Ja, men det är, det är egentligen den viktigaste frågan när det kommer till hur vi använder offentlig mark. Det fanns en, en tanke kring scales of efficiency som gjorde att väldigt många av mina kollegor inom fastighetsavdelningar, i, inte bara i City Hall i London men en, även de 33 andra kommuner som, um, uh, som uh, London uh, inkluderar uh, tänkte att det var inte värt det. Det var egentligen lika svårt att uh, sälja genom tomträtt en, en tomt typ samma storlek av det här rum som det var att sälja någonting som skulle uh, uh, genomföra tusen bostäder eller någonting. Uh, eller tog, och det tog lika långt. Och det var därför att plattformen var så viktigt. Uh, att vi kunde sen gå igenom alla de här processer med miljöinventering eller marksanering, alla de um, underlag som man behöver få till. Att vi, vi fick ett konsult för att göra det för alla de här små tomter på en gång. Och då hade vi en uh, konsekvent um, underlag till själva processen. Men det också hittade ganska många efficiencies i skala. Och det visade sig att ja, men det, det tar ändå tid, men man kan få resultat tidigare. Istället för att gå igenom en jättekomplex planeringsprocess, eller kanske inte istället för, men bredvid att man gör de här jättelånga komplexa planeringsprocesser för jättestora tomter, som också tar jättemycket tid. Mm.